What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Ultimate Masters Draft here on magicthegathering.internet.uk. I shouldn't browse food stuff on the internet. I mean, of all the things on the internet to browse, I think food stuff's probably one of the safer things to browse. Unless you're hungry. That's like going grocery shopping while you're hungry. And that's just... No bueno. I want this so... Okay, so it's actually like a... Oh, it's a desirous thing. Huh. The photos... Oh. Yeah, that looks pretty legit, actually. Hmm. Fresh milk, soft serve, purple yam, tiramisu, sweet taro and yam chips, and ripened pumpkin bingsu. Yep, that seems all right. <clears throat> you should you should probably be able to find that pretty easily, though. I imagine you can just go to your supermarket and grab that. Thanks for this report. It's quite interesting. Anytime. Really glad uh, Really glad you got a chance to check it out. If you guys haven't done so, you can check it out on YouTube. I uploaded it this morning. It's uh, my recent thoughts on the <clears throat> pro scene changes. And uh, it's about 32 minutes, so it's a good chunk of... I pretty much go over everything in the article. Uh, Wizards posted an article about the changes last week. And I just pretty much go from start to finish about uh, how I feel on all the different points what it might mean for things, and uh, whether it's a net positive or not. So. I think Stinger Flink Spider is good, but I also don't think there's that many flyers in the format. It's still a 2-5 with the reach. It still kills a thing. Mammoth Umber is pretty strong. I don't know. This pack isn't very exciting, unfortunately. I think green's pretty decent. I like how you read that article like an editor. I did, yeah, I was like, I was reading it and I'm like, I don't know why this sentence is here. Why is this paragraph in this place? <clears throat> it's very hard to un unattach that, that part of my brain. Ooh. There's no way to like, there's no way to abuse this, right? I don't think so. I don't think there's like Vampire Hex Mage or anything or, uh, like thespian stage in this format. I think it's literally just dark depths, which is fine. <clears throat> is thespian stage in the format? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, it's got to be a rare though, so I'm not. I have my doubts we're gonna get it. There's also a travel prep, eventually worth, and a face fetters. So, huh? I think it is travel prep. I think travel prep is pretty busted. Also, a pulse of Marasa that could come back. <clears throat> wild mongrel, okay. I'm down with the wild mongrel. We can actually get. Uh, I can actually maybe try the madness. I mean, like all the madness stuff is like red and black in this set, not white, not green. I think basking rule is the only green madness card. We have uh, the three five black creature and the the four four like arrogant worm. Reckless Worm. <laughs> How do I unsub? Uh, if someone can give the Twitch customer service number to No Beats, uh, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just gonna take Wild Mongrel here. Walker of the Ancient Tomb. What? Here's my issue with Ancient Tomb. If you're playing like Cube. The cards you're Ancient Tombing into are well worth the four life cost, right? So, like, if I'm able to play a Grim Monolith on turn one with Ancient Tomb, that's significantly stronger. But if you're playing just, like, an Ication Crier on turn two instead, I don't know if that's as good. It might still be just as good. And I think we're going to have to take it based on the fact that I'm not positive, because it is an Ancient Tomb. And, uh... I think some people messed up. Blood Fancy's alright. Acacian Crier is alright. I want to take this Staunch Hearted Warrior. I think it's good with... it's. I mean, it's obviously good with Travel Prep, but it's also good with, like, the... Like, other white cards, like God's Willing. <clears throat> uh, 
prey upon. Artisan of Kozlek with an ancient tomb. That's pretty good. Heliod's Pilgrim, are you any good? I mean, you probably will be good. And there's nothing else in this pack that's even competing for it, so... <clears throat> Is Avacyn's Pilgrim in the set? Because I feel like it should be. It's like the perfect land for us. Look how, what a time to be alive. Look at our mana base. It's amazing. We got an ancient tomb, a stirring wildwood. <clears throat> is tomb insane in this set? I mean, tomb is insane in general. Mammoth Umbra. That's beautiful. Like, I worry about taking, like, two points every single time I activate this in a format that's not cube where you're not going to be, like, slamming haymakers. Like, I don't want to take two damage just to play, like, a... 2-2 two, two on turn 3 instead, but I mean, I don't know. Pulse of Marasa came back. That's pretty okay. I'm also a big Cathodian fan, but Pulse is like, Pulse is really nice because it kind of like makes your graveyard a toolbox where you're like, well, I need, I need another way to deal with the flyer, or I need another discard outlet, or I need another <laughs> Artisan of Kozilek. You know which land doesn't deal any damage to you? Dark Depths. Hmm. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah, Travel Prep is uncommon. Which is rightfully so. This was originally common in Innistrad, and uh, this card is busted. If you can get like two or three Travel Preps in your deck, it's just really hard to deal with. You probably lose when you play against the person with two or three, not when you have them. Another root walla. Well, another root walla. It's the same root walla. It's the same guy. He just came back. Is double cleave any good here? Double cleave on Artisan of Kozilek. Well, that just wins. I'm just going to take Angelic Renewal. I don't think this card's good, but maybe I'm wrong. Another Pilgrim. I feel like the green-white deck is probably going to be able to get more uh, <clears throat> enchantments to search out. It just searches out auras, though, so we can't actually get the Angelic Renewal. Yeah, that's actually nice. This is a nice sideboard option. Sure. <laughs> it's happy I get to watch Frank Wilhelm on paternity leave. We have, we have an Ancient Tomb, so we can cast this, right? <clears throat> my problem with double cleave is that it doesn't give uh trample so like i just put it on this guy they're like all right i'll block with a one one and you're like all right you got it man i hate having an emerald in a pack and just not being able to do anything about it <clears throat> I guess you can play it on turn 14, though, if you get the Ancient Tomb out, so. I think that's some value worth considering. Take it in hopes of Through the Breach? That's almost tempting, because the only cards we're passing is, like, Hyena Umbra and Staunch Hearted Warrior. One of which might even come back. There's no way we're getting a 15, though, right? Miraculous recovery is an instant. I'm gonna take it. We're gonna we're gonna live dangerously. Not intelligently. Oh, Verdant Eidolon. What if our goal is just to just to cast 15 mana Emrakul? Can that be our goal? Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, we already have one artisan of Kozilek. I don't want to go crazy here. All right, prismatic lens. All right. Do we have a way to sacrifice Cathodians during like our main phase? <laughs> I think it's just prismatic lens here we just want actually we just want ways to get mana into play right and this actually lets us cast black <laughs> it's in tomb oh man the dream i feel like the dream is so close generator servant ancient tomb generator servant prismatic lens burden idol on i feel like it's so close i want to take the root wall here to be realistic though or umbra is pretty nice Yeah, take a Boar Umbra. Like, our deck is still realistic, other than this Emrakul, right? Resurrection can't summon him. No, like, Emrakul has the clause that, like, if it's into the grave, it's in the graveyard, you you shuffle it back into your library. So, um, <clears throat> it has to be an instant speed thing, and you have to do all the triggers on the stack. So, Miraculous Recovery would actually let us do it, because it's an instant. And then we also get a 16-16 Emrakul, so. Kodama's Reach. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm game. I'm on board. Yeah, so not only do we, we, we could have taken the Entomb, we would have had to, had to have a way to play black, and we also would have had uh, to open Miraculous Recovery, which is uncommon. What if I told you Basking Root Wall I was a wizard lizard? I would believe you. Vessel of an Endless Rest or a third Basking Root Wall. It's probably Vessel, right? I, I I like the option of playing all these other colors. Like, we have this. We have Lens. And I like Vessel because it just gives us so many options in terms of, like, casting things. Like, now we can actually use one of these Pilgrims to get a Flight of Fancy and cast it off of all of our colors. I don't... Not a big Terramorphic Expanse fan. Also, Desperate Ritual? Oh, man, dude. It's so close. It's uncommon, though, so we're just going to take the, the card drawing. Yep, Staunch Hearted Warrior did come back. At least I think this is the same pack. Two drop is good. <laughs> Reveal the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand. You gain life equal to the cards card of mana cost. Hmm. I think this is actually broken, though. Last week we tried this, and we didn't actually gain the life. It just put the card into the hand, which is a pretty big deal. That's, like, the most beneficial part of the card, gaining six life. I mean, maybe not the most beneficial. Drawing the card is probably the most beneficial. Yeah, I'll take Walker of the Grove. Ronum Unicorn. All right, so our deck is actually looking pretty decent. I just don't like that we don't have a Miraculous Recovery for Emer Emrakul. <clears throat> Cathodian's great, we just don't have a way to sacrifice it, like, to add the mana. It's not really ramp. I mean, like, if a Cathodian's on board, the only way it's going to die is if they kill it during your main phase, which is pretty awkward. Um, Oh, uh, this is definitely Phantom, yes. 
But this Emrakul... Wow, this, we have another pack left? Our deck actually looks pretty reasonable for having a whole pack left. We have Flight of Fancy, Mammoth Umbra, Boar Umbra. How deep are we going? Get demoed on. <laughs> yeah, I think we're taking this. Like, it's just, we have tons of ways to fix. With one swamp, we already have Lens, Swamp, Kodama's Reach, and Vessel. We have, oh, and Verdant Idol on. I didn't even include that. We have five sources of black with one swamp in the deck. Yeah. Plus, if we do get a, a second stirring wildwood, sure. If we do get a um, a miraculous recovery, then we all of a sudden have a way to search for either Emrakul or miraculous recovery, which is pretty nice. Stirring wildwood number two seems good. Containment priest, not really where you want to be. We have two root wallas though, and we also have uh, an Emrakul, which we want to try to shoot into place. So I'm going to take this wild mongrel. Which will easily replace Aeronum Unicorn. I mean, you don't get to 15 mana, right? Like, that's not real. I'm a professional magic player for over 10 years, and I, I still need to be told that I can't just cast... I can't hard cast Emrakul. Let's take Face Fetters. It's definitely good with Double Heliod's Pilgrim. I just want to make sure there's nothing else great in that pack. There was not. So many Resurrections. hero good here? I don't think so. Like, we don't have a ton of things. Actually, we have Boar Umbro. We have... Ah, it makes, our, it makes our Umbers cheaper. Makes all of these cheaper. And this cheaper. Yeah, actually, hero's probably great here. Yeah, I actually like the way this deck is turning out. A good amount. We have a lot of uh, resilience as well. Like we have pulse to get something back. We have double hero Helad's pilgrim to search for things. Hey. Tano, so the resub. Everybody, dance. <laughs> it's good. This is fun. Yay, my anus. Okay, got a little deep. Got a little dark there, but that's all right. Appreciate the resub, buddy. Sixteen months in a row. Thank you so much. scale fume spider defy gravity is kind of cute with uh sting flinger spider stinger fling spider you can just give what anything flying and then just kill it it's literally like a it's a two card combo that turns this into a shriek maw have you not seen rejected i actually don't think i have seen rejected i don't want to i don't want to open that because it's going to get me demonetized i'm gonna take the god's willing probably the best the most reliable card in that pack i would say You done messed up, A.A. Ron! <sighs> I'm pretty sure it's Hero over Wingsteed Rider. Wingsteed Rider is great because of flying, but we're not... We don't have any reason to play a double white card. Uh, we can be pretty heavy, heavy green here and not worry about the white. Wow, that Thespian stage coming back, or, or oh, being there. Real tilting, real tilting. Wow, that was sad. This is why Parappa the Rapper says you gotta believe. Oh man, kick, punch, it's all in the mind. Uh, I'm gonna just take this brown scale. I don't think any of these cards are really relevant. 
prior maybe in case there is like the last chance nope we're done no miraculous recovery emrakul you were a you were a dream that was never realized I don't actually hate Grave Scrabbler in here when we have Double Wild Mongrel. Do we have any other way to discard? Do we take the Crier? Ooh, we did take the Crier. Spider Armor seems fine. Okay. Safe hold delete. This is a lot of life. 4-4 four, four first strike is actually pretty decent. I mean, we do have Ancient Tomb, let's not forget. And we have a bunch of ramp. Yeah, we'll just take this guy. We have a lot of two drops already. I'm not really super keen on more two drops. I'll take the shielding plaques. Actually, twins is great here. We could probably cut the blue. Maybe we don't cut anything. Maybe we're just four color green. Three Ronin unicorns. I mean, realistically, we probably have to cut something here because we have 26 cards and we're still trying to add like Grave Scrabbler Demonic Tutor. Cue the Price is Right losing, losing theme. Deal. I can't believe the Dark Depths and the, the Thespian stage. Oh, man. If you play a 7 mana 4 4 as opposed to a 15 mana 15 15, I will shoot you in the face on general principle. Well, then. That escalated quickly. All right, so this is still 27 cards. We still need some cuts here. I like all of our two drops. I like all of our one drops. Uh, I like all of our four, three drops. We can probably cut one warrior here. Uh, I don't know if we love Walker of the Grove. I don't know if we are getting 15 mana. That feels ambitious. I don't know if I'm on board. I don't want to cut Artisan of Cause. Like, we want to pay off for all the ramp spells, and all the ramp spells are what's helping us splash the black cards, right? So, like, if we cut the ramp spells, we probably cut the black cards too. But then we don't need to cut the ramp spells. It's, it's kind of like this, it's this weird tension here where you're like, well, the reason that these are so easy to splash is because we have ramp. But if we cut the big guys... We don't need the ramp. And then if we don't have the ramp, we can't play black cards. So it's like all these kind of coexist with each other. I can see cutting Artisan only because we have, um, or Eidolon just because we have, we're not playing Emrakul and this is no longer alive. However, I don't like cutting Artisan because I think it's a very rewarding top end where you're just like, well, like, can you beat this? Because you're dead if you can't. Uh, I could see cutting safe hold elite, but it's pretty good. I could see cutting one of these, probably the vessel. I think I like having Kodama's Reach and Prismatic Lens. We also do have um, we have room for more black mana because we do have Stirring Wildwoods. I could see cutting one Pilgrim as well. I think this is fine. I think this as a deck is fine. And we can play these. We can add like two swamps. You want to say three. Aggressive. Uh, add one of you. Cut one of you. Add one of you. So this is seven. This is nine green sources. Seven white sources. And two black sources. I think that's fine. Our white. See, this is why we didn't take the wing steed. Because our white is very low. We only have five white cards and three black cards. And... You know, the the Stirring Wild Woods are super helpful, so. Yeah, I think this is fine. Definitely not as good as our last deck, but I like it. I could see playing the Vessel over the Prismatic Lens, but yeah, I think I like that. We have a lot of two drops and not as many three drops. Oh, I'm fine with that. Like, Vessel ramps us, or Prismatic Lens ramps us to four, but we only really have two cards that we really want to play on four fetters and staunch heart and we actually don't always want to play fetters on four anyway so i think it's fine ramping to five which just really gets us to these guys anyway so
What do you think this deck is missing? Maybe a couple non-basic lands? No, I think we're good on the non-basic lands, strangely enough. Just played a turn four Ulamog versus an opponent with two lands. Am I... Yeah, you're... That's not good. What was that? How did you How did you manage the turn four Ulamog? I'm curious as to what the, the means of that are in this format. First draft you've seen. Um, it's growing on me, but I don't think it's one of the better master sets. I think I did like a ton of the last modern master set like 30 drafts 40 drafts something ridiculous and um really ended up enjoying that set this one i can't imagine myself doing that many but it was in modern okay well that makes sense then that is a completely different thing then all right i thought we were talking about ultimate master's draft because ulamog is in here Fashion related to the party. Actually, that's fine because we weren't going to cast them on turn one anyway, so. Well, we just have it all. Except for a reliable discard outlet. No blocks. All right, I like it. I, f I think I've faced off against Golgari Thug twice and both times the players would block with it and then just put it back on top of their library and redraw it. And I'm like, that's eh, not ideal. And they would just replay it. Yes, let's use the ability. What do we got, Mammoth and Boar? Let's take Boar because we can definitely cast it next turn. It's just Mammoth Umber without Vigilance. But if we don't hit a land, we can still play both of these or keep this up. Uh, and if we do hit a land, that's the only situation where we're playing Mammoth Umbra. So. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of graveyard archetypes. Like, there's flashback stuff. There's, like, uh, most colors have ways to, like, mill yourself. I wanna know. Can you show me? Um. Yeah, that's a good deal. Six six seems good. If you want to trade here, I'm ugh, totally game for that. I don't actually think I'm gonna play root wall when we have God's willing up. There's just no benefit to that. Like, if they want to play just the wind and bounce this guy, it's super, super no bueno. Did you hear this was supposed to be a very specific graveyard set that was repackaged and changed to UMA Explains? Oh, is that true? What? That's so random. What a, like, what a last minute thing. They're like, oh, quick, change the name. It's Ultimate Masters now. I mean, it makes total sense. Well, benefits of playing Ruwall is if they have Edict, but now we have a second guy, so it's not really a concern. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, all right, I'll check this out in a second. See, so they just put the Golgari onto the they. They just put the Golgari Thug on top of their library again, right? So now they draw it again. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep God's willing up. I, I don't think the pressure we're gonna we're gonna get from Basking River Wall is worth the lack of protection we're gonna lose from not keeping God's willing up. Oh my god. The set symbol is two skulls? They didn't even change the set symbol? No way. The 
see so here's a skull right here and this is like a, the this is the mouth and these are the eyes and this is a skull right here it's just a, it's a, like a mobius strip with two skeletons on it why wouldn't they change the logo at least that's interesting That seems like awkwardly lazy. Tassiger. Give me one planes. That's an ancient tomb. That's pretty good. But it's not what we're looking for here. We want to we want a white mana so we can keep this. We can we can play face fetters on the Tassiger and also play God's Willing. But still gonna get in there. Okay, so hold on. When this dies, put target creature card from your on top of your... So you don't, you're missing a draw step, right? Like, I'm not crazy. Is it... Is that a May ability? Because that's weird. One, two, three... Actually, yeah, we can take... We can take two here. That's fine. We get to play a root wall. I think it's worth taking two to play a root wall. We're also going to gain two, so uh, you know what's the what's the harm here? I don't think it is a may, which is weird because you're just missing draw steps, right? You get to keep playing this guy, but you only draw one card a turn, and uh... okay. I feel like we're very far ahead here. I mean, if you want to block the Heliod's Pilgrim, that's fine. Oh, man. Mill two more. All right. Sounds good. Meringue River, River Boy. So we can get rid of this guy, but it can't block anyway, so I'm not sure we really care about it. But I think we're going to actually just get rid of the ghoul callers, gentlemen. Because that guy actually does a thing. And we can play a root wall. And still keep up uh, Vessel. They probably made the decision to cut master sets, had already spec'd a lot in the set and commissioned a lot of the art and decided to make some adjustments for it. Yeah, it, I know that definitely sounds like 100% what they did, but it's weird that they didn't change a lot of the details like the back of the box or the logo, which is literally just two skulls, which is kind of strange. The reason I heard is that Hasbro is worrying that they lost their largest retail seller and now Hasbro is making wizards do things for cash grabs for the end of the year, for example, Mythic Edition, and now the most expensive master set with super limited printing promos in the box, only not in packs. Yeah, I mean, hard to say what wizards is or isn't thinking sometimes, but one, two, three, four, five, six. We're close, but not there. Do you have a link to the picture of the back of the box? Oh yeah, I can just actually show it. It was shown in the someone linked it in the chat. Um, but yeah, oh th this is the back of the box. It says every game of Magic is different, but one thing never changes: the thrill of casting a devastating spell at the perfect moment. Throughout the history of Magic, many of these spells have drawn their power from the graveyard. <laughs> Ultimate Master celebrates that legacy by bringing together some of the most powerful graveyard-themed cards and mechanics ever printed. Which is weird because Ultimate Masters doesn't really have a graveyard connotation to it. And then you have these two skulls as the set symbol, which is really interesting. So, let's just do, do the gathering of magic. Are you watching a blank screen or is my video just not working? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to err on the side of the ladder there. So I can pump both of these. And you add a green. 
Okay, so you're taking six here. All right, I mean, I'm just gonna pass again. The box art templated as a card just had for the name it. Just had oh, just had blank for the name and it autofilled the italics. Ultimate master, somebody thought. To, oh, that probably makes sense. Yeah, they just probably like well, we'll we'll leave the blank spot for whatever we name it, and um, man, these root wallers are doing some hard work. And that's it. All right. This is a grindy game where they weren't really, really getting ahead because they just kept putting the same guy on top of their library. I think we're fine. I don't think we really need anything significant here. I like Flight of Fancy just because it does... It offers a lot of evasion where, like, the blue-black decks don't seem to have a ton of that. Also, putting a, a Flight of Fancy on, like, an Artisan of Kozilek or a Stauntrotted Warrior is very, very good. It just draws you two cards. Have you guys ever drawn two cards before? It's very good. I think we'll be fine for now. Gotta go pick out a Christmas tree. Good luck with the rest of the games. And I'll see you on the tube of views. Water Sports Drew, have it easy. take it easy, buddy. Uh, this hand is bad. I'm not thrilled about it. Sounds like two cards away from being great. This is worse. Okay. I'm game. I mean, it's not a big deal. It doesn't, like, affect things, right? Like, it's not... No one's like, man, this is a huge deal. It's not a big deal. It just feels a little lazy, that's all. And uh, that resonates with people. People can understand that. They feel like... Uh, you, you don't want to feel like a product you're buying into or you're being sold is was hastily put together. And uh, it wasn't well thought out. And that's the feeling, I think. I think people are like, well, this is one product. You just slapped a label and slapped a logo on it and it's a different product now, you know? Yeah, there's nothing like there's no there's no big there's no huge problem with it. It's just like, well, boy. Let's get one swamp and one plains. Do you guys remember when we had um Sigarda last draft? Boy, that was good stuff. John Medina, what's going on? Thanks for the host, buddy. I appreciate it. I wonder whether there was obviously new art for Dig Through Time on the box that wasn't... Oh, well, also, like, it's funny that Dig is even in the set, because it's, like, not even legal in any formats. Isn't it, like, banned in Legacy and, like... Is it restricted in Vintage? I don't actually know. It might be restricted in Vintage. Nope, I will just take one from this dude. Well, this is convenient. So now we just go like two drop, stirring wildwood, travel prep, attack for two. We could also just wait to attack for three. And then it actually doesn't die to this. Cause what does it do? Yeah, that's better.
Tassiger again. Well, Tassiger is very strong. <laughs> so is Mammothumbra, though. So is Mammothumbra. Milled two lands. It is turn six. They've missed two land drops. I imagine milling these two lands is probably not helpful. Oh, they hit a land anyway. They only have three cards in hand. That's good. <sighs> Do you activate Tasker here? I imagine you're going to make a 2-2 from Ghoul Caller's Accomplice. No, Slum Reaper. Yeah, that's awkward because you can just sack the thug. Uh, yeah. It is what it is. Wild Mongrel's worse than Safe Hold Elite in this situation for obvious reasons. We could activate this and then prep on both these guys. I like saving the prep until. I mean, this is, it makes this a 6-6, six, six, though. We could also just play Hero of Iroas and Travel Prep, which actually is probably better. Because while we like that... Uh, I like saving it for the... and nah, I think it's fine. I like saving it for the Persist. Like, it, negative, it, it negates the negative one, negative one counter so that it can persist again. I think I'd rather just have it be a 6-6. Six, six, because then they can't double block and just kill it anyway, so... Is this like Slum Reaper? Sure. Thank you. Actually, I should have played the land because I think it's actually better than Stirring Wildwood here. Or uh, activating Stirring Wildwood in response and sacrificing is probably better than Hero of Iroas here. Maybe. Barman, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Okay, well, I guess they're not playing Slum Reaper now. But we know you have it. God's willing. God's willing off the top one time. Staunch Hearted Warrior. So if they just, I mean, like, they have to, like, triple block, right? And I think that's fine, because we get to keep a 3-3. Three, three. And we get to get rid of Tassiger. So, this is grindy, but... You see, this is why I want the Flight of Fancy, because just being able to pop it on here and just attack for six uh, for four turns is pretty good. I think it's actually worth splashing in here. Can I get another You Done Messed Up AA, Ron? You Done Messed Up AA, Ron? Ron? Well, they didn't block, so it's basically like we have pseudo Flight of Fancy on anyway. Slum Reaper. Now you can sacrifice a zombie. And then you can block with a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2. Two, two. Yep, that is reasonable. Seven lands. We're one land away from an artisan of Kozilek. 
So I have no desire to attack here and have them double block, and then we just have no real recourse for Tassiger, unfortunately. Would you have any interest in playing that Muldrotha list I played yesterday as my deck critique for December? I need to ready to Muldrotha list, which thought. Yeah, I actually never. I think that deck you played yesterday was pretty sweet. Kind of grindy, but pretty sweet. They have a Moan, but they only have five lands. They have a Gold Collar's Accomplice. All right, so went to their first. If we draw Artisan of Kozlek next turn, we're on, we're on, we're in, we're good times. We're having good times. They have two cards in hand. I don't think we're in terrible shape, but boy, would I really like to. Uh, my kingdom for a flight of fancy here. Wow. I feel like dig through time is unbeatable and limited. It's also unbeatable and constructed, which is why it's banned in every format. Yep, this is exactly what we were afraid of. Did you see my card sorting pick? I don't think so. Oh, that that like that's a that's anxiety triggering. Oh man. That's uncomfortable. All right. Well, I wish we activated this. I didn't think they were going to attack with everybody. Four, eight, nine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Four, five, six, seven. We can come we can crack back for seven if they don't do anything. Turn to miss the slum reaper. Let's come back end of the turn. Yeah, we're definitely uh, stirring wildwood is this is rough. Where they sack Golgari Thug to get back something else. And we're really just hoping to draw Artisan of Kozilek, right? Sorry, where's the Golgari Thug? What are they targeting? Let's find out. Targeting Crow of Dark Titans, Thanks. sure. Walladil, 49 months in a row. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Yep, that is not a uh, an Artisan of Kozilek. Still, I don't feel like we're terribly far behind. They're going to draw a crow. I mean, do we just like. We actually, double blocking here is fine if they want to attack with Tassiker. So one of their cards is Crow. Let's see if it's actually any good. The other two. At worst, we lose a land, I think. Come on. Don't have it. Don't have it. They did not have it. 
they actually just yeah what do we give them back probably the ghoul caller's accomplice or actually deranged assistance probably worse right unless they need six mana i don't know what to give them here just the wind is not great I think it's either during, I think it's probably Ghoul Caller's Accomplice. Like it's just a two-two that I don't really care about. It has less uh, utility than the Deranged Assistant, especially in their deck, which seems to be pretty reliant on milling. And we still got our ninth four, five, six, seven, eight. We still have our ninth mana for that for that artisan of Kozilek, so. Yeah, we're not gonna pass here. Or right, like so if we attack, they can come back for four and we're not gonna block. And even if we draw like a trick to like threaten lethal, like they still have a blocker, so. This is a very easy block though if they attack with the Slum Reaper. <sighs> Crow milling two more, Stitch Drake and a Dreamscape Artist. Why not play the two drop I gave you? I gave it to you. Okay, this is a this is a pretty solid draw here. <laughs> and we're definitely attacking for two here. Do they want to keep up just the wind? I can't see why you wouldn't play the two drop. Yeah, I'm gonna pass. Forbidden Alchemy. I'm actually afraid of them having Laboratory Maniac at this point. Either Snipe, Crow, and another Slum Reaper hit the graveyard. They have six cards in their library. Oh, man. This is totally Laboratory Maniac City. Well, I can't block Floaty Boys. It's a lot of lands. Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Why haven't they played the two two yet? I see. I have to assume they gain two life there. <laughs> I believe they have two instants or sorceries in their graveyard. Like, we have to believe that within the five cards in the deck and the two unknown cards in their hand, those seven cards, they have a Laboratory Maniac, right? They're just saving it till the last minute. We knew about that guy. Okay. Or they don't, and we just have to deal with this crow and all this nonsense on board. Okay, now we're talking. Let's go find something that saves us. One, two, three, four, six, seven. We can't cast Artisan of Kozilek. We could cast Face Fetters on, like, the Crow. I do like Stinger Fling Spider as well. That's also a pretty solid. Um, if we're going to get... Face Fetters, we'd probably just get Heliod's Pilgrim to get the extra body, and then just play Face Fetters on the Crow, but Sting Flinger Spider just seems better. It eats everything. It's just a better answer than... Huh. 
Yeah, let's get the spider. And ideally, we just mill their lab maniac. They don't have it in hand, and we just mill it. Come on. That's got to be an option, right? Okay, Meringue River Prowler. That's also a thing. That's a frustrating thing. All right. But you're going to draw, and you're going to go to two cards. And then if you play Prowler, then you go to one card, attack for two. You go to no cards, attack for two, and then you die. So that's not going to do it. You really have to have a Lab Maniac here. I don't want you to. Huh. You're just rising from the tides. Are we dead? Not looking good. God, so we're so close to actually winning here. It's so funny because we can actually, God's willing, and add nine counters, making this a 10 10. If we block four things, we still take 16. Yeah, that's pretty good. Peanut butter and mayo, yay or nay? Uh, hard nay. I mean, this is our last ditch option, right? Like, we just have to attack and hope they... Oh, they they, they blocked the good one. That's sad. I wish I had a trampoline. No way to, to break through there. Flight of Fancy needs to get in, get in here. They have either Snipe and they have one Just the Wind, is what we've seen. Yeah, we're definitely playing Flight of Fancy here. Cut one of those, add one Island... Is mayonnaise a sandwich? <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? I can't believe you're not playing the Big Daddy. Yeah, well, Big Daddy is real expensive. I will play first. Yeah, this seems fine. I'm not thrilled about it. Have you ever gone back and watched your games in the Eldrazi Winter Pro Tour? Um, I've watched snippets of my games. I've never watched, I never sat down and watched a whole match. Um, but people still talk about them. People still thank mention them. You. Tano, so the gifted sub. Thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. I also take offense to not including Emrakul in this deck. Oh, God. How many little cuties can we play this game? It is also anti mill tech, that's true. How about this guy? 
I don't think there's any haste, guys. This is probably stupid. I probably should have just waited, but I really wanted to, like... This is just me trying to rush through the turn as quick as possible so I can play this and be done. All right, we did it. I don't think we had 15 lands last game. I think we were closer to, like, 9 or 10. Are these little dudes just gonna do the do the deed? Get the job done? Oh yeah, they've X sixth. Alright, well they're a nine. <laughs> Feeling aggressive here. Sure. money if this weren't a rhetorical question how would you answer it oh oh god uh tanos thank you so much for the donation dude really appreciate it as always you are the best oh i wish i had a better answer for your question though okay all right two one ones so you have to block one of these guys. Seems good. I like that you immediately got the reason that's both funny and a bit... Yeah, I was like, I don't... It's definitely one of those, it definitely breaks your brain for a second. Yeah, the pressure is definitely on here, which is pretty nice. They're at two already. Moan is pretty good. Moan would be a, a nice answer here. However, if we draw Flight of Fancy, it would be the perfect, uh, the perfect homage to our, to our last draft where Air Lizard was doing such hard work. Would it be better to trade and then play the Mongrel? Uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. That's a, I mean, that's a hard question. Well, a black mana would be nice, considering I have two. All right. So you have to have two answers here. Shouldn't have played the land first. Ah. Because now if we... If they do bounce this guy with just the wind and then they block here, then we're in... Yeah, that was a misplay. I'm going to pass here because you're dead if you, if you don't do anything. Okay. You're doing something. Yep, that's what we were thinking. Yeah, we should have not played the land. That was really bad. So now I think we are going to play the Mongrel instead. Ugh, it's so bad. Yeah, we're just going to trade here. 
So the benefit of having Mongrel out is that it's a 2-2, so it's it's exactly lethal um, without having to pump it. So I don't have to invest two mana into it every turn. It also gets bigger. So if they do play 2-2s, two um, we can make this as big as we want. And now we have a stupid forest that we just <sighs> aggressively uh, played before we're thinking. see this is also one of the reasons i didn't want to play the mongrel so it's like it's it's definitely a 50 50 there because like i also don't want to <laughs> uh dilute my threats here for no reason also an artisan of kozlak one two three four five six seven eight nine artisan of kozlak off the top would be pretty insane yeah it's bigger and you don't have to spend mana to pump it is exactly why it puts pressure on more efficiently for you. That is a dude. They have four minutes to win this game, though. We are at 20, and they have one card in hand. Although they do have Tassiger to start activating. Oh, I see. So, what we're going to do is get this. Put just the wind back you have one card in hand um play ancient tomb because we have not yet add a black demonic tutor and let's go get i'm pretty sure it's flight of fancy here they have one card Yeah, I figured I was like, all right, activate Tasker. I will give you a Dreamscape Artist back. Draw two. Yeah, I think you can make arguments for God's Willing or for Flight of Fancy. I wanted the Flight of Fancy because I wanted to be able to win with the card we decided to board in because of its value. So... That was pretty sweet. I'm also adding the Flight of Fancy to the deck because I think it is pretty good. What do we take out for it? I actually forgot. Or do we just run, do we just run 41 here? Take out one planes for one. Could you tell me what your streaming days are? Monday through Friday, starting at around 2 p.m. It is also in my Twitch profile. I'm actually fine with 41 in this format. We have a Kodama's Reach and a Vessel. We only want to be able to gain one hit, so I don't think we want to trade card advantage. I don't know what you, I don't, I, I don't know what you mean. Uh, would you like to play first? Yes. This hand is interesting. I don't think it's good, but it is interesting. Can this root wall get there? I don't think so. When does the sad man show up? Oh boy. This hand is worse. I'll keep it because we have blue and we have flight of fancy. So I'm going to keep it based on the fact that this could theoretically get us back in the game. If we draw a wild mongrel into a swamp, I think we're good. Maybe. 
Don't really care about sanitarium skeleton, so that's fine. I see. I'm also probably one of the few MTG streamers that isn't, like, sponsored or promoted by Wizards, so I don't actually have any strong incentive to jump ship to Arena here. Um, I don't see the benefit of playing you. I'd rather just wait. I like that they didn't win the flip here. Take three, which is actually four. Actually, that was pretty okay. We don't have a fiery temper. Oh, six, six. Nice. All right. We're alive. We're alive. Thermo Alchemist is pretty strong. I mean, it's what is it? Whenever you whenever you cast sorceries and instant sorcery, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, that's not bad. We're gonna do one of these jobbies. Man, Welp. should have kept up the white, I suppose. So we go. They go deal us one. We go to eleven. We block here. We take one, two, three. Four, so we only go to seven. It's not terrible. Feels real bad not being able to attack with our seven seven flyer. Wow. Aggressive. Like you do. Wild Mongrel, and we'll travel prep here. I feel like we're way behind because of this Thermo Alchemist. Face fetters off the top would be great. Block here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're basically dead here. <laughs> no boy, no. Is there anything that gives lifelink in this format? Any enchantments that give lifelink? Sure. Is there any way I can steal a win here with a God's Willing and a travel prep in my graveyard at six, seven, eight, nine? I don't think so. I don't foresee it. Let's go to the next one. Mark of the Vampire. Yeah, that's a good one. I would definitely board and mark against this deck if we had it. Ancestor's Chosen is nice, but like, it's only not because you rarely have that many cards in your graveyard. Brown scale is fine, but I don't. I don't want to be dredging a brown scale. I think we're actually okay. We have Pulse of Morasa and we have Face Fetters in the deck, so we shouldn't actually be that much of a dog to the aggressive red-black deck, but...
Oh, this hand is great. Uh, it's actually not great. I just saw Hero Viroas and I was like, oh, I'm in. I don't know if that's good enough, but we're going to hope it is. A swamp would be pretty nice here. Well, that's a forest. That's actually very close to a swamp. If you're in Florida, it's basically the same thing. Get them. I don't know if that key was 358 or 360. I took two cards out, and I don't, I'm not sure if I took them out online as well, and I did not replace them yet. I'm unsure. Either way, the beyond the beyond the infinite, beyond the the beyond card is out, and uh, the time twister is out. God, oh, my my kingdom for a daybreak coronet here. Oh my god, they're killing me with this. That would be great too. So by attacking here, we're dealing six, or they're blocking with one, and we're gonna just be blocking one anyway. So. This is a time where I'm more okay with dealing the damage here. It's not Enter the Infinite, it's Beyond. Beyond something, I can't think of the name right now. Well, that's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think this deck is a little too aggressive for us. Give me a blue so I can put Flight of Fancy on this guy and kill you in two turns. Mm, that's not it. Okay, well, I appreciate four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is fine. They're at eight. Oh god, even Flight of Fancy doesn't kill them. Lose the flip. They won the flip. Oh, the rich get richer. Behold the beyond. There it is. You guys figured it out. You guys nailed it. Why wouldn't you discard it on my turn? Why would you do it at the end of your turn? That's really weird to discard it at the end of your turn. Like, if you do it on my turn, it's the same effect, but you get the... You get the flying. It's a weird decision. Yeah, all right, we're dead here. Yeah, this deck was a little too fast, and our mana base did not cooperate, and we kept a uh, nine mana double black card, blue card hand, with literally all three of our splash cards. But uh, nevertheless, I'm undeterred. Did he say he's under turds? Keep. Snap keep. This hand is gorgeous. <sighs> that was great for me with my boxes for Stellar and I won two drafts for box. That's pretty sweet. Fan, congrats, buddy. I'm working on a special project for the channel tonight. I'm going to email you tomorrow with details of this. Yeah, that's definitely cool. I'm really curious what's going on, though. That's interesting. <clears throat> Let's actually go Kodama's Reach. Do you just trade here? Yeah, we're gonna just trade here. We're gonna. Oh, this is actually great because we can get the perfect. Uh, we can just get island swamp here, and then we have it, we have it all. Island swamp. What are we putting into play? Let's put. Let's put the swamp into play. I mean, this is an easy trade. I'll discard a random card to kill this guy, so I don't think you're gonna make it. 
fan what, what what's what's the thanks for no blocks I don't have any creatures they didn't play anything happening right now <coughs> oh ho, 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 ho. oh that's crafty I'm probably just gonna let this guy die there's no two cards in my hand that I'm willing to discard for this that's sad for congratulating oh okay I was like did I help in some way yeah this is sad I has a sad Next turn we can go uh, Demonic Tutor and Flight of Fancy, which is nice. Oh, we could have just played this. Yeah, you're right. That's actually a good point. That's freaking A. That's like the one rare time. Oh, God, I didn't even consider it. I'm so tilted. I, I think I was too tilted. I just felt bad about throwing our Wild Mongrel away, but... God, tilt begets other tilts. Yeah, we'll just take five here. We could also tutor for a... Uh, Face fetters or a pulse of Marasa if we really want this wild mongrel back. God, now they have four mana? I'm afraid of everything they have. Let's play this. See if they want to. No, nothing? Okay. Is it just pulse here? Is it God's willing? We just protect this guy for next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven mana. Not really close to. Not really close to Artisan of Kozilek yet. Don't have a discard out for Grave Scrambler. I like Pulse. It might just be Artisan. Like Artisan's just a solid late. Like we need to draw two more lands, but we also have Flight of Fancy. The problem with Grave Scrabbler, they're just going to bounce this guy. It's going to be a, it's going to be Blowout City. The problem with Grave Scrabbler is they have no way to discard it, and you don't get the body back unless you discard it. It's not a Grave Digger unless you discard it. Oh, come on. Again? What is this? What? Why did you discard that? Are you going to circle the logic for one? Oh my god, dude. That's actually fine, though. Actually, that's better than I... Yeah, that's actually totally fine. They could have also discarded the circle logic, too, and so they paid the full price for it. Artisan of God's like maybe this is a greedy a greedy decision. I don't know. Tanos, have a good night, buddy. Enjoy your food. God, it's also only 3 p.m. there. That's weird. Treasure cruise. All right, well, we get a free turn to do whatever we want, I guess. Stirring Wildwood number two, it is. So, one, two, we can just play Spider here.
Huh. Well, I guess we're going to five here. And losing our spooter. Moan of the Unhallowed. Never fails. Okay. Well, we have blockers for days, and next turn we can play Artisan, which is pretty nice. So if we attack for four, they can double block. Yeah, that's... I agree that not killing the Dragoon has cost us life. I agree. Staring Wildwood's OP. Moon of the Unhallowed coming down. Yep, that's bad. Return to draw face fetters. That's not face fetters at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so we can block three, we take six. So, yeah. Moan of the Unhallowed is such a busted magic card. And it's not broken by any means, it's just very, very strong. Making four zombies over the course of multiple turns is pretty good. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure though the, the one thing that cost us that game was literally not getting rid of the Dragoon. <sighs> That's unfortunate. I'm taking your advice and saying you need to put a new pot of coffee. What does that mean? What does that even mean? Let's try, uh, okay. Yeah, Ollie was actually snowed in uh, in Virginia after the SCG, so that's why there has not been a new episode. I actually asked him today, I'm like, hey, let me know when you can cast so we can get a new episode out before I leave on Wednesday for New York, but... He has not gotten back to me yet. Although he is streaming, I believe, which I'm like, hey buddy, if you can stream, you can you can podcast. This is not If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Well, I feel like our our time hath ended in this in this draft. Oh, got him. Uh, let's make him black. That was a good deal. I feel comfortable with that exchange. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Do I trade here? I think so. We don't really have any benefit to this. Like, the closest thing we're going to actually play on a hero is Flight of Fancy, and we're not going to have any mana to pump it after that, so. I'm not too concerned. If you want to block here, we'll easily pump. They don't have two black, which is nice because we can't get uh, 
Oh man, the value is so real with these root walls. That root wall of value. What did they have instant speed last turn? They could bounce this guy to play the lady, the lady of the night, the vampire children, the weirdo vampire children. But like then they have to, they only have one blocker, so they're going to be blocking. Let's say here they take one, two, three, four. You know what? No guts, no glory. I know they have the three five, so that's it's whatever. We just have to like. I see. Oh, that's better. They can't what? I don't know what you're saying right now. They can definitely block, and they definitely have to return Skywing Aven to do that. But now they're just going to frantic search and play it off of that instead, which is significantly worse, I believe. Wow, just the wind and a twins. Holy smokes. That is... Well, they just had it all. That's literally like the perfect storm. I think this deck might have been too ambitious with its with its colors. What do you bounce? Dreamscape, there's no dreamscape artist on the field. We're talking about Skywing Haven. I don't know what you're talking about with dreamscape. Is anyone? Uh, that's actually fine. Sure. Yep, that is reasonable. That is sad. But we're going to play another root wall. So. Uh, let's go white. I want the most visual appealing choices. That's a good. I probably would have blocked the hero there instead. Like, getting the hero off the board is probably better than getting their basking root wall off the board. But that actually didn't turn out as bad as I expected. We traded these two for a Skywing Aven and a Just the Wind. So, that's just fine. That's pretty okay. <laughs> Alright, so we can actually grab... That's actually very good. We can just play Grave Scrabbler here. Um... Like, can we just discard our hand? Oh, actually, hold on. Let's. I think we can. I think we can get some value out of this. And they're probably gonna be like, "Sure, if you want to discard your whole hand, that's okay." Whereas Mike kind of gave him a hug after watching that clip this morning. Oh man, that clip is gas. Ooh, aggressive. Yeah, this is still how we're gonna do it. Discard you. One, two. Get back, basking root walla. Yep. And we're gonna make you blue. Discard Basking Rootwalla. Play Basking Rootwalla. Make you red. Discard Walker. Make you black. And I think I'm just going to actually kill both these guys. And our board seems pretty insane now.
one, two, three. We can get. We don't have any other one mana or the two mana ones, unfortunately. But I still think it's worth. It. Uh, no, it's actually you want to keep the. What are they? If they block here, they take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That seems fair. <laughs> They're probably gonna block here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They go to one. see what happens leave it up to you <sighs> um, sure so you're at two and everything on board is lethal now seems good man grave scrabbler was probably the perfect draw there or I guess Swamp, rather. We had the Grave Scrabbler and just being able to uh, do all the things. Um, I also think they probably really needed a second black. I'm tempted to bring a Crushing Canopy because they have a bunch of the 2-1 Flyers. I also like Spider Spider Umbra. I think our deck is good. I'm gonna submit it. I think we're all right. Uh, keep. <laughs> Snap keep. Basking rule laws do a lot of work. I'm actually somewhat surprised. Oh, that's great. Get a second green and a uh, blue mana. Well, now we're just playing that guy. Ooh, that's really good with two root walls in hand. Good lord. Yeah, okay. I'm going to play one now because I want to be able to attack with it. So, But then we're going to save one so that we can trade profitably here. No blocks. All right. Well, now we're gonna drop, drop a little, little, little cutie like it's hot. Pop on down. Let's make them red. Now we're getting green and blue. Now we have all the things. I feel like we're in good shape. Well, that's obnoxious. <laughs> He's not sure. He's unsure of what's happening. So they could double block this and they take six. Yeah, this is definitely an alpha moment. Huh. I mean, this is actually fine because I have a second one. Uh, what's our play here, though? Mongrel, maybe pulse, get back mongrel? also just deal six here I think we're definitely dealing definitely dealing three 
And then we'll just play another mongrel. All right, aggressive bird, aggressive. Hey, bird. Never, I'm never actually upset drawing multiple stirring wildwoods. I would like another green, though. We can actually discard artisan here. This is a pretty easy discard. Frantic sir. Oh, God. Ugh. So tired of this Twins of Maurer State. Fru, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Block here, block here. That's what I'm predicting. No, just block there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so just activate a wildwood and get in there. They didn't actually play. They didn't play the Aven. So what do they have here? They can play frantic search into another one of these. Sultai with milk. <laughs> yeah, we can go with that. I'm um, game. One, two. Three, do you just activate and then alpha? You block here, block here, take three. Like, why didn't you play the bird? What do you have? Like, you could have just the wind and frantic search. Is that better than. All right, let's get a little wide, I guess. We could also end the turn pulse for basking root wall, discard basking root wall, and just have a lot of pressure on the board. They did have frantic search. All right, so we're on to something here. Spooky, spooky bant moldy esper uh, oh grave scrambler that's nice how oh. how oh, nice so basically the same they i mean like frantic search into grave scrambler we had we figured just the win but it was actually grave so they get skywing haven back so i have two havens i don't know if we're that far ahead like this card's very hard to deal with i think like if we had if this wasn't here, I think we'd actually have a very, very substantial board, but so now they just have double even. And they're going to six cards. Sure. Like, it's turn seven, and they've missed a bunch of land drops, which is good. I approve of that. Are we going to pulse root wall, play root wall, and then just attack with a million things? That seems good. Like the only this is the only profitable block they have because everybody else gets bigger. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> Pulse for Kodama's reach would be insane. Do you just think this is like an instant speed regrowth? That would be gas. Last gasp on that guy, sure. Okay, so you are tapped out now. All right, all the little little gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are one mana away from. Uh, I think we're just gonna pass here. Just, I mean, like we don't have without this guy, we don't really have that many profitable attacks. We were missing one plane, so that we can't activate both of these. We can just activate one. And it's difference between like six guys to to four guys. Okay. Pop these dudes out. Every time there's a master set going on, the old man in me wants to tell stories about the madness. <laughs> Back in my day. All right, land off the top. You're like the literal worst thing I could have drawn. It's actually the exact opposite of a good card. Let me tell you how madness used to work. Madness was actually ridiculous back in the day. It was pretty convoluted. Yep, sure. So now they have two Avens in hand, which is good. But they're not playing the Avens, which is interesting. Do I just evoke this guy? Like, I feel like we're, we're playing around a circular logic here, right? Why wouldn't you play Avon? I don't know. So, five mana. One, two, three, four, five. We don't have enough to not evoke it. So, we're just going to play this. Assume your hand is circular logic, and that's fine. You don't have circular logic, but you also didn't play an Avon. My confusion is real. I don't understand. Oh, they milled, they just milled that. I was like, wait, why is it in the graveyard? I see. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's two bodies this turn, so. Um, should we attack him with it? No, because it doesn't, like the ghoul steed makes it, so it's not even really great to attack with. I'm a fan of them, like, killing Artisan of Kozilek or Count. Oh my god, really? We're killing the 3-5 because they can't get it back. And now we get to Artisan of Kozlek, that guy, or we can just Grave Scrabble it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Like, we could play Grave Scrabbler and get something back, but I think Grave Scrabbler is actually just better um, getting back Artisan of Kozlek. So, ah, oh, they have a Grave Scrambler. So their hand is just stacked. God, the 3 5 is so obnoxious. So they have even even twins that we know about. I 
We're going to actually attack here because they're going to probably block with this guy. Or not block, but uh, discard the twins to block. And then we get to kill the Dragoon, much like we did not do last game. So again, we know their hand is even even, so sure. I can't imagine you have a second circular logic. It is uncommon. Also, if we draw just God's Willing, we win on the spot with, with Hero of Liana Tower. Yeah, throw the zombie in the way. Throw this guy in the way. Throw somebody in the way. There you go. Uh, there's no Avens in the graveyard, so I have to assume that it's two Avens. Unless they went somewhere else and I don't know about it. Uh, keep that up. Seems good. Value play. I mean, they still have discard outlets. They have literally Ghoul Steed on board and they have two Avens in hand. So there's definitely discard outlets present. Have you heard Diana Krall's Christmas album? It's <laughs> no, no, I have not. Oh, look who, it, look who it is! It's your old pal, that thing. It's your boy. All right, so we finally, uh, even if they counter the artisan, we're still getting a seven-seven back, and then we still have Grave Scrabbler to get back the artisan. So, uh, I think I'll use the ability. Sure. Okay, we did it. Uh, your turn. Have we figured out this format yet? We're getting there. I feel like we're uh, we're getting closer to the figure outage of the format. Is this just a... Oh, there was a second circular logic. It was literally the top card. Wow, that's hilarious. They just random mill and they hit the second circular logic that were like, I don't know if, you, I don't know if they have one. They had one. Man, where's my second black source? All right, let's do some damage. Now we annihilate. I imagine it's going to be Accomplice and, like, Grave Scrabbler. Yep, all right. Well, you see, folks. Are there some things you think you should avoid drafting in the set? Not really. Like, there's nothing I can really pinpoint that you should avoid drafting. I haven't done enough drafts to figure that out yet. Oh, God, they're going to... Oh, no. Four, five, six, seven. And they have another last gasp in hand? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's everything. So this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can go to the back of the bus. But then you die here, so you have to block this oh are you gonna bounce this with like a with an into the wind this is all very intriguing just the wind bouncing that guy sure oh it's when he leaves the battlefield that's fantastic Do 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 playing this guy, getting back artisan. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can't cast this guy yet, but we could have if we played that instead. But I'd rather just get back the uh, I think they're just dead, right? There's nothing they can do here, right? And that'll do. Got him. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on Twitch and Patreon. You can find the links both in the description below. You can also check me out at meundies.com slash franklapore. You will get a 15% discount and you'll get free shipping and free returns. Uh, in addition, if you guys are looking for any cool holiday gifts or just anything for yourself, you can check out Aaron Kane custom deck boxes. The link is in the description below and you'll get 10% off with the promo code Frank. His stuff is amazing. I say this every time, but he made me a cube box out of Coco Bolo wood and it is gorgeous. It is absolutely incredible. His work is uh, astounding. And I definitely recommend checking that out if you're in the market for that kind of thing. Or even if you're not, check it out. Maybe you will be. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate the support. I will see you next time. And uh, take it easy.